Hello, my name is Donna Talahach, and this piece that I'm about to demonstrate painting is called Let Your Dreams Set Sail. I created this video so people could follow along with my methods of creating art and share some of my ideas of the process. I like to start my collages on MDF board. This one's 11 by 14. I like Liquitex matte medium and I use that as an adhesive so you can see me covering the entire board with it. I use a dedicated brush. This flat brush is just for gluing down my pieces. I generally rip my pieces of paper as I collage. Um, I try to create a pattern that will follow the proposed piece that I want to paint, which is in my mind at this time. Um, I want a lot of the features of this particular painting to be horizontal because it's of waters and a rocky coastline and a sailboat. And so I'm laying down the papers so that they have a lot of a horizontal pattern to them. I also try to place key elements of my collage, meaning the papers of my collage that I think are really pretty, like this um, staff for the music piece, um, in areas of the painting that I can um, hopefully not cover over in the future with my main items of my painting. Of course, this doesn't always turn out as planned. It's a very um, organic process in laying down my pieces. I tend to like to use the pages of the Farmer's Almanac. It's a texture, something similar to newsprint. It's very porous. It's kind of rough. It rips with um, jagged edges. And in the end, after I lay the paint down on it, you can see the texture so well that I really, really prefer these pages. I also adore the eclectic kind of look of the articles in Farmer's Almanac. So you generally, um, there's always months of the year or charts or graphs or interesting articles where you can pull a picture or something out of. So that's where my collage elements come from. I also use a lot of other elements. I use some of Sean Petit's collage packs. Um, I'm a Photoshop teacher, so I make some of my own collage packs sometimes by printing up things that I like or portions of things. Um, I use a wide variety of things for this collage stage and it's mostly for inspiration. After covering the whole piece with my matte medium, I didn't wait for it to dry because I like to work wet on wet. So I added some cerulean blue with a little bit of white gesso and some water to make it a real thin wash across the bottom. I'm letting the rule of thirds guide me in my positioning of where I'm putting this blue. The rule of thirds is a great way to kind of make decisions on um, where to place the fo focal point, um, how large the focal point might be, and of course, how to divide your composition, which at early on, these might be hard decisions for people, so it's nice to have this guideline. The rule of thirds is very easy to set up if you're familiar with the game of tic-tac-toe. You just draw a tic-tac-toe grid across your paper, evenly spaced to the composition. And then you can place your horizon either at the top horizontal third or the bottom horizontal third. And you should, as a rule of thumb, place your focal point or center of interest where the lines intersect. Use it as a rough guideline, but it's a good guideline because it gives you balance and proportion and like I said, it's an easy way to get started on what might seem like a difficult chore. I had some Deco Art Titanium Buff paint and it was my fault that it was a little dry. So no worries, I thought I would use some Liquitex Glazing Medium to extend and soften the paint without losing the color. And so you can see me dabbing the paint on. Another kind of funny fact about me, I guess, is that I'll use anything as a marking tool in art. I've used sticks before and reeds, and in this case, I have this brush from Household Painting. It's square and it's got an angle, and it's defined as a brush used to paint windowsills. But I found it was excellent to dab on some of the paint. The way I like the way that it left the paint looking on the piece. And so, long story short, if really, if you have some treasured brushes in your collection, maybe from painting the kitchen and they have crusty dried on edges or they're out of shape or something, you may have a treasure for fine art because sometimes these weathered 
brushes will give you the best texture. So that's a little tip that I have. Don't throw those things away. <laughs> they may be the perfect idea. I'm also using a brayer and I must confess that when I first started using a brayer I was just globbing on the paint because I was putting it in a puddle of paint. The paint was too heavy. I would get it on my piece and it would just glob on there like bread dough and so um, then I watched a video that Sean Petit had and I forget the topic of the video but what she was doing is similar to what I'm doing there is I'm taking my brush and I'm painting a little layer of paint right onto my brayer and then adhering the paint to that and now I really am happy to say that I can use my brayer um, well and I really like the nice results of it. As I was using my hair dryer to dry the composition, I really confirmed my suspicion that number one, the boat was too low in the composition and it needed to be moved to the top intersect of the rule of thirds grid. I also thought too that perhaps the proportion was off on the boat for the size of my MDF board compared to the size of the sailboat. So you'll see in the future that I changed the shape of the sailboat by selecting another stencil. And then I also extended its size, its size um, just depending on how I felt it should lay on the composition. I know one goal I had was that this, the mask of the sail had to stick up above the horizon. That was key for this composition to flow. You'll see in my use of the stencil that I also extended the bottom of the boat to be a little bit larger in proportion to the composition. So I added a second bottom of the boat and I wanted to make room for reflections. Now a little um, tip on reflections is the fact that reflections come directly at you. So there's the tip. If you're going to make a reflection, it needs to come right at you, the viewer. So if you're standing on the water, the reflections of closer of course, they're not going to go to your next door neighbor. They're going to come right at your eyesight. So I wanted to allow for room for that reflection to take up a lot of space in the bottom right of the composition. To balance out those two heavy features of the boat and its reflection, I started to make a rugged rocky coastline. So this scene is from the Mediterranean and the Costa Brava region of Spain. And there are so many rocky shorelines and the boats come so close, dangerously close to them. And I wanted to show that the sailboat was going out to sea, sailing around an inlet to join some other small sailboats on the horizon. So I'm just kind of roughing in this imaginary coast that I have created. I used a sap green to paint foliage on the coastline and I also used a raw umber brown to kind of make the rocks. Um, I wanted a little more cerulean blue in the water and um, it wasn't until the very end that I really discovered I liked the way the distressed ink blue stamp looked on top of the water. So at this stage I was just using the paint and trying to mix it and get a texture that I liked. I like the idea of the sky being flooded with yellow as if we were looking into the sun late in the afternoon as it was setting behind the mountains. And so I used the brayer once again to tone down the sky area and to better define the horizon, which I thought was kind of muddied. I tried to make a line of uh, mountains on the horizon and I wasn't sure if it was translating directly as mountains or maybe as too heavy of a line. So I just kind of used the brayer to hide that. Occasionally you'll see me use a blue shop towel. It's actually a heavy paper towel that mechanics sometimes use. It's wonderful to blot up paint. It leaves behind the most beautiful texture and it's kind of superior really to paper towels. So if you've wondered if it's worth the extra $3 for a roll, um, I would suggest buying it. I think it is and it lasts for a very long time. It's only has a cloth like texture. And the only thing you have to watch is maybe if your husband or boyfriend takes it back out to the garage because it is such a useful um, tool that it might just disappear from your art studio. 
As far as styles go, I like the way the Impressionist paints, so I like to add dabs of color around the piece, and that's what you'll see me doing. I added some little white sails to look like there's boats on the horizon, and I prefer to use either angled or flat brushes for that. As far as the composition goes, I feel like the several small boats will read as one item balanced by the large sailboat on the other. So I'm pretty happy with how that's developing. The darkness of the coastline I thought needed to be balanced somehow. So I worked a little bit with the reflection of the sails. I added some gold to it and I tried to do my best with working in some white and cerulean blue to cover up some of the heavy brushwork that I had had earlier in the process. When coming to the end of a piece, I'm really cognizant of all the different parts. And I feel like you can have the different parts of a piece of music, but unless they come together in a harmonious way, it just sounds like different people playing. So what I wanted was all my different paint colors and brush strokes to kind of play nicely together and create some kind of harmony in the piece. So I thought that perhaps I could unite everything by the gold tone that I brought out in the reflection of the sail. And so you may have seen me dabbing it around the piece and that was my um, purpose was just to sprinkle it in there to unite the composition. Another way that I unite the composition is to empty my brushes here and there around the piece. And so in that way, I'm spreading my ink around. I decided to add the word postcard to the top because the picture was looking like a postcard. And I knew the place was called Roses. And I thought that if I labeled it Roses, then it would be too specific for all viewers. So I wanted to wink at the location. So my idea was to scan this beautiful picture of my great grandmother and my great grandfather, Scott, on their wedding day. And the picture frame is made of beautiful roses. And so I scanned it, I printed it from my printer, and then I cut the roses out. I um, put them on with the matte medium, which was a dull finish. So that meant that I had to come in and ultimately make it glossy once again with the glazing medium. I wanted to add a bird or a seagull and you'll see me adding it several times with some ranger distressed inks. This turned out to be something that I didn't want in the end, but I'm so glad that I went this direction because it it really led me to the point of bringing out my ranger inks and using them to arrange on the page. After adding some of the ranger distressed ink with the cosmetic brushes around the roses, I realized that having a pink glow on the entire painting would be a very good thing. I decided at the end that I would not add a sentiment to the original piece, so the original piece is without sentiment. However, um, all of our work ends up digital at one time or another. So after I saved a picture for everyone digitally to see, I opened up that painting again in Photoshop and I added a digital sentiment for those who perhaps would like to include something like that, just to show where I may suggest placing it on the composition. I hope you like this little demonstration and thank you for watching.